and we have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum, back from London with a tan, <laughs> with a tan in London. Yes, I understand. And uh, Ann Northrop back in the saddle again, too. Although I see our images are over our other, our names. Oops, we got to make it. Oh, go. I'm Andy Hum. That's Ann I'm Northrop. Ann Northrop. Uh, one note for the viewers. Uh, some of you watch us live on Facebook on Wednesdays at 2.30 Eastern when we do the show. Uh, record the show. We are switching our taping day because of some technical issues with our uh, originating broadcaster, Manhattan Neighborhood Network. So we will be doing this live on Tuesdays for the foreseeable future as they switch studios. Tuesdays at 2.30 uh, from uh, MNN. Now, the other thing about that is that it won't affect people who watch us on free speech over the weekend or whatever, or Thursday nights here in New York City. But we always post the show the evening we record it. So it will be available online on our website at gayusatv.org on Tuesday evenings going forward or Wednesday at the latest. Uh, and seven o'clock in Philadelphia <laughs> on Philly and, Camp. Uh, I, on Friday or whatever it is that they do it. But uh, you can see the I show. Think it's Saturday, isn't it? Uh, Saturday, yes, Saturday yes. on Philly Camp. But um, uh, the show is going to be recorded a day early. That'll make us a little earlier on the news. And uh, you can see it Tuesday evenings. But so much of this is timeless. Uh, yeah. In the news, uh, there were some, uh, the, in the primaries this week, there were some big LGBTQ wins in Minnesota and Alaska. Yep. And we're going to talk about the myriad ways that LGBTQ issues uh, intersected in the life of bisexual actor Anne Heche, uh, tragically dead at 53. Uh, the NFL, National Football League's first out a regular season player, got a contract with one of his old teams. Very exciting. Uh, we'll also tell you about a trans rugby player and a gay dragster, not the RuPaul variety. Brittany Griner is appealing her nine-year sentence in Russia. And we'll bring you updates on monkeypox and a new study on HIV and aging. And Melissa Etheridge and Alan Cumming have shows opening in New York. Yes, very exciting. Now, we had hoped to bring you a guest this week, but we're having some technical difficulties with her internet connection. So I don't, unless our director tells us differently, uh, I think we're going to postpone that interview till next week. We're very much looking forward to talking with Catherine Stewart, who's a leading journalist and author of the Power Worshippers Inside the Dangerous Rise of Religious Nationalism which is one of our weekly topics. So a lot of the things we we're going to talk about with Catherine, uh, we're, we're certainly going to bring you the news aspects of those. And if you're a very loyal Gay USA viewers, you will remember that we were talking to her 10 years ago on this topic. We uh, were- Such an innocent time. <laughs> the topic of her book then was uh, the Good News Club, the Christian rights stealth assault on America's children. It's not well, stealth anymore. Well, she had a very scary op-ed in the New York Times a few weeks ago. And so we said, it's time for Catherine to come back. Uh, and I also read a very, very scary piece in the New York Times magazine uh, on their August 7th edition. I highly recommend that everybody get that uh, if you have access to the New York Times. Uh, it's about the Claremont Institute, which is a oh. right-wing think tank and they're the, among those who are behind this whole push to end democracy in the United States. It is a terrifying article. And it's, you come out of it knowing that uh, Donald Trump 
is not the main player here. He is the puppet. And it is really all the right wing groups behind him who are dedicated to the proposition of turning the United States into a theocracy, uh, basically imposing their version of Sharia law and, uh, and ending d democracy as we know it. it I, is I, it's interesting. I didn't see too many Christians uh, complaining about uh, uh, Salman Rushdie getting assaulted, although... No, because they have no brief for uh, Muslims or Jews or anyone other than themselves. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, but they used to go after Muslims as religious extremists, you know, and I thought that might happen. But no, they're, they're perfectly happy with the way they're working on us. Um, now, uh, look, let's talk about some of the things that happened this week. Yeah. Uh, Florida went ahead and did ban gender affirming care in for people on Medicaid. How could you be more cruel? This is for 9,000 people on Medicaid cannot, uh, tra transgender people cannot get access to transgender affirming care at this point. And this is, both, this is both youth and adults. They're not limiting themselves now just to kids and complaining right. that kids are being, you know, mistreated. They're going all the way for the entire trans population. Uh, but strangely enough, a court in West Virginia ordered that Medicaid must cover gender affirming care. Uh, so this could end up in the Supreme Court with uh, conflicting decisions in the states. Also in Florida, in Sarasota County schools, they have a new policy. Uh, uh, again, very cruel. It requires staff to notify parents if a student says that they're gay, gender questioning, or transgender. The teacher must tell an administrator if a student wants to change their pronouns or their, or their name. Uh, and then the administration has to tell the parents, and if the parents don't get permission, the student must be dead named by the teacher, can't use their new pronouns. Uh, look, teachers are now trying to warn the students, don't tell me. But of course, this is a, you know, a, a catch 22 for the students. They can't be themselves. They can't be called who, who they are. And if they do come out uh, and they're not out to their parents, they're at a lot of risk. Teachers are now telling their students, don't tell me. I don't want any harm to come to you. And if you tell me, then I have to take it up the uh, chain of command here. And I don't want to have to do that and put you at risk. So please do not tell me. And well, that's another, a terrible situation. There was another teacher, I don't even know what state she was in, with one of these laws, and we're going to talk about that. I mean, she said, uh, you know, I have to catalog all these library books and see if, and send them off and see if there's, they're on a list that you can't read, and that's the reason you can't read these books, because they haven't been cleared yet. I mean, it's, it's incredible. She it's did a, a TikTok video that uh, explained all this, and it's evidently gone viral. Well, in fact, this is happening uh, everywhere. And in Keller, Texas, which is a suburb of Fort Worth, uh, there is a new school board that's been elected, which is Christian controlled, right wing Christian controlled. They, you know, they're not kidding when they say we're taking control of the school boards. Uh, and this is where this is happening, and this is where the power lies, is at this level of local control. So in Keller, Texas, the new right-wing Christian-controlled school board has ordered teachers to pull all school books, all school books for examination and evaluation. And they are censoring books like The Diary of Anne Frank, uh, the Bible has been challenged, which you have always said should be. Well, challenged. it should be. Uh, Fun Home by Alison. Very violent Echo, book. Uh, Toni Morrison books, but they're going. They are forcing teachers and administrators to go through every single book within the walls of the school for evaluation before the kids can get their hands on them. Of course. Most kids get their information through their devices these days, and you can access almost anything there. And so, is it the Brooklyn Public Library, which has offered uh, kids free library cards online so that they can access right. books? Yep, and other library systems, New York Public Library, are doing this kind of thing, so you can you can read the books. Um, 
So, uh, well, in Michigan, uh, voters uh, voters rejected funding for uh, the local library, Patmos Library, uh, because they wanted to discourage the library from uh, dis from displaying LGBTQ books. We have a this is a tiny little town. This is their little their little library that they have. They only have a budget of about, I think, about two hundred and sixty thousand dollars. So, so people voted it down, and it was all over. You're grooming our kids for homosexuality. You won't take these homosexual books and trans books out of the library. So we're not voting for you to enable you to do this. This was the attitude that spread, and it is a conservative community, but it also has people who support free speech and good libraries. And of course, the librarians aren't backing down. They they would rather close than take the books out. And uh, so somebody did a GoFundMe campaign or a, or, or a fundraising campaign and has already raised $133,000 as of yesterday on their own to fulfill this budget. And as you and I have discussed, some of these voters said, well, we're not looking to close down the library. We're not really interested in uh, taking away all their funding, but we had to do this to teach them a lesson and send a message and protect our children. Oh my God. It's insane. And uh, then, but better news in Pennsylvania, uh, Governor Tom Wolf, who is ending his term this year, uh, signed an executive order banning conversion therapy. He called it well, junk. Well, he's not really banning it. Well, okay, go ahead, Ann. What's he doing? <laughs> he is discouraging it. <laughs> okay. He's saying no state funds for it, but he well, is encouraging private insurance companies not to fund it. But it's not a it, it's an executive. When you, cut off, when you cut off state funds, as they are in Florida for transgender care, you're, yeah. you're, you're making a big move. Now, of course, if Representative Doug Mastriano succeeds uh, uh, Tom Wolf, he will likely make conversion therapy mandatory. Exactly. <laughs> And he, is, has a, he has a Democratic opponent, Josh Shapiro, who is leading in the polls. And there's a whole slew of you know, Republicans, sort of the never Trump types, who are endorsing Josh Shapiro, Shapiro because this Mastriano is just a nightmare. And Governor Wolf has been terrific. Well, this is the real question that it has us on the edge of our seats for the next few months. Uh, because, and we'll get to some specific primary results, uh, not quite yet, but we see, we see this onslaught, this tidal wave of hatred and, and bigotry and, and censorship. And, uh, and we see all these right wingers uh, nominated by the Republican Party, but they are behind in the polls in most places. Even Marco Rubio is currently a few points behind mm -hmm. Val Demings in the polls. That's amazing. And I think that's Florida. the abortion issue. Uh, it may be, uh, and maybe the they have just overplayed their hand. I think some of the the reason that the right wing is after us so uh, virulently is because to some extent we overplayed our hand. We got a little smug, we got a little complacent with all our victories over the last few years, and and now maybe they're going over the edge, and that will mean that all these people they're nominating, all these people they want in power are not going to win in yes, the election. And every Democrat will be vilified as a socialist, not that there's anything wrong with that. And a groomer and a pedophile. And, exactly. And we have specific examples of that that we are going to talk but about. But first, first, my good news story of the week from Virginia, where a federal judge has just issued a decision that says the Americans with Disabilities Act Yes. covers transgender people on the basis of gender dysphoria as a disability, not because, trans being transgender itself. And, and because a gender identity disorder is specifically forbidden to be covered, so they're saying gender dysphoria is distress, and that's different, and that's what this judge saw. This was a lawsuit brought by a trans woman Who's a, who was a prisoner and in Virginia, and she was badly mistreated in the prison. She was housed with men. She was refused uh, medication she needed. Medications and, that she had been on for 20 years. And so this federal judge said, 
that is wrong. This is a violation of the Americans with Disabilities Act, and you have to uh, compensate her, treat people like this differently. And this could be a very, very fundamentally important decision. Now, speaking of grooming and everything, uh, the Justice Department is investigating the Southern Baptist Convention for its history of sexual abuse. Yes. In seminaries, in missionary organizations, in parishes, uh, following on the convention's own scathing review of its of clergy abuse of women and children, and not just clergy, but other staff. They suppressed all this for two decades. They have 703 suspected clergy on a list compiled by the executive committee, 205 credibly accused, but many were moved around to over the years to other parishes. This is a church with 14 million members, 47,000 churches, in all 50 states, and it is corrupt. Well, of course, that's what the Catholic Church has done for decades, move people around rather than uh, turn them over to the authorities for prosecution. And I was interested in the New York Times story on this, uh, the Southern Baptist, because they identified this as abuse, uh, sexual abuse of women. And it is hard for me to imagine that it was confined to sexual abuse of women, uh, given the patterns we've seen, whether it's in the Catholic Church or the military or wherever. Oh, uh, they're erasing us just like they're erasing us from the monkeypox. Uh, exactly, board. exactly. So I, I await further details on that. And um, you know, going back to the uh, to the library uh, or thing and the school thing, uh, Penn America um, uh, has a report out on educational gag orders which increased, we've told you about this, of course, every week, 250% this year, 36 state bills, 36 states with bills, 137 bills. Now, 12 were passed last year and seven were passed this year, uh, mostly with, um, you can't mention race and LGBTQ issues. Uh, now, 39% are targeting higher education and some are going after uh, uh, non-public schools and universities. So much for free speech in this country. Uh, of the 137 bills, only one has a Democratic sponsor. Uh, well, this is what I, I mean when I talk about this tidal wave and the uh, assault on democracy. Uh, it's just, it, it is literally terrifying. And the bills are getting harsher. They're heavy fines. You can lose your job. You, your school system can lose its state funding, uh, criminal charges for teachers. It's uh, very, very scary. So I am looking forward to the report that is going to be done by the United Nations independent expert on uh, violence and discrimination against people on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity. You're going this to go to gonna... the press conference? <laughs> oh, August, are they having one? August 30th, he's going to prepare. Well, let, let's talk about what he's well, doing. Well, they're not issuing the report yet, right? He's no, just he's going to do, he is going to do, a pro he's meeting from now until I think the 26th and then on the 30th at the United Nations headquarters in New York. He is going to have a press conference to talk about preliminary results. Now, uh, this, he is doing this at the invitation of the United States. I don't think this will happen in a Republican administration. But uh, Biden's, the Biden administration said, come. And, and of course, he's going to some strange places. He's going to Washington, Alabama, Birmingham, Alabama, San Diego, and one other place uh, to, to, you know, to, to talk to local people, see how the, oh, and Florida, Miami, Florida, of course, yeah. to see how all this is playing out, uh, this, this attack on gay people. Well, I hope that people uh, proactively send him a lot more information about what's His going on. His name is Victor Madrigal uh, Borlos. United yeah. Nations independent expert on sexual orientation and gender identity. Look it up. Right, he's gonna, he's gonna be surveying until the 29th at a press conference on the 30th. And we'll make recommendations to the UN Human Rights Council. You know, we're, we are now becoming a, a, a rogue state when it comes to a lot of these things, and we're on the list. Well, the violence is increasing. Uh, over and over, day after day, we read about violent attacks uh, 
escalating on, uh, you know, a trans teen beaten for the second time in Florida just for being uh, themselves. Uh, a trans uh, Twitch streamer swatted people sent to their house, cops sent to their house with false reports of uh, nefarious doings. Uh, in Ontario, Canada, uh, uh, a Oh, uh, that that uh, swatting was in Ontario. The cops went to her house. She explained this was all a, a, an attack by uh, haters. And yet the cops took every piece of computer equipment and electronic equipment she had, even though there was no basis for any thought that she was doing anything inappropriate. They arrested her. Uh, and of course, the attacks of, uh, of us as groomers and pedophiles, of everybody as groomers and pedophiles, are skyrocketing. Uh, it's just out of control. It's painful. It's painful. It's painful to hear. It's painful to talk about. Let's give them a little bit of good news of things that are going on in this country. There okay. were some primaries this we week. We can alternate. <laughs> there was some primaries this week in Minnesota. Uh, they now have their, uh, they're poised to get their first out trans legislator, Lee Finke. Yes. Right? And yes. this, is, this is a reliable uh, Democratic Farmer Labor Party district, an open seat in the St. Paul area. Uh, Lee won with 60% uh, of the vote in the primary. She is a journalist, an advocate, a filmmaker, and uh, should be sailing through to be the first trans member of the Minnesota House. And she wants to be at the table to push back against anti-trans legislation, which will be proposed by Republicans. Exactly. Uh, and then, also in Minnesota, Erin May Quaid, uh, a black lesbian, won a state Senate primary. Uh, she, <laughs> she gave her speech at the state convention while she was in labor. She's a former state representative. This is the Apple Valley area, but she does face a competitive race. And in St. Paul, uh, the city's equity manager, Claire, uh, how we say this, uh, Omu, Omu Verbetten, a, describes herself as a queer woman, won her primary for an open Senate seat and is favored to win. Senegalese uh, family, uh, so she could be the first uh, black member of the uh, first black woman in the state senate. Okay, we'll and then in, go ahead. You want to talk about Alaska? Two out candidates, Andrew Gray and Jenny Armstrong, won their primaries for the Alaska State House. Why is this so significant? It's one of the few states that's never had elected a out LGBTQ legislator. Uh, Andrew is gay, married, has a nine-year-old son. Uh, Jenny describes herself as pansexual. Okay. Um, and in other encouraging political news, the National Basketball Association is trying to drive millions of fans to the, to the polls in November by holding election-themed games the day before the election and canceling all election day games so that you can go out and vote. Uh, someone has the right idea of how to get people to the polls. Uh, and back to discrimination in education uh, by religion. In uh, Louisiana, uh, a lesbian couple adopted the daughter of the uh, late brother of one of them. They took in the daughter after the brother died uh, to raise her. So they, uh, they're religious people, this lesbian couple. And they enrolled this uh, girl in the Bible Baptist School in their uh, town. Uh, the Bible Baptist School has now kicked the girl out of school because she has uh, lesbian adoptive parents. Uh, many other schools, here's the good news, invited her to show up uh, to enroll. And she is now at a, another religious school, the Hamilton Christian School in Lake Charles, Louisiana, which is a welcoming religious-based school. 
example, a similar story in the Pacific Northwest. And I apologize for not having the exact location. I searched the story. They kept it a little vague. But a guy named, a pastor named Chris Kinman, who was the director of a non-denominational camp, was told that he and his wife had to renounce their trans son, Jay, in order to keep his job. So they basically said, you know, we're moving to New Zealand <laughs> where my wife could do her job. Jay worked at the camp too. He first came out as a lesbian as a teen. And then they said, well, keep it quiet, daddy will lose his job. But you can't keep quiet when you're, when you're trans, really. It's harder. Uh, and um, the, the Christians uh, told Chris to leave. Um, Jay left the church. He went to college and is transitioning. Um, and so, but boy, oh boy, oh boy, it just doesn't sound very Christian to me. Uh, no, I'm looking here at a list just to see if I have any other uh, stories of this. Uh, we do know that um, uh, a Texas dentist and three others are suing uh, to for religious exemptions uh, from paying for insurance that covers PrEP and contraception. They don't believe. That's the new thing. Yeah. Uh, Out of the Claremont Institute. Yes. Uh, no, uh, do not tax me to pay for services for other people I don't like. Well, some, some of us, I, not myself, some people will stop paying taxes during the Vietnam War. Try exactly. it. Exactly. And went to, it works. went to jail for it. Right. Um, in New York, you know, we told you about how Mayor Adams appointed a bunch of anti-gay pastors and gave them good jobs and said that they changed. Mayor Adams hasn't changed. He's supporting an anti-gay, anti-Semitic opponent versus an out-gay state senator, Jabari Brisport, uh, out in Brooklyn, I guess it is. This guy, Conrad Tillard, is a now a Christian pastor who once referred to a Brooklyn assemblyman as a snotty-nosed Jewish politician, opposes abortion, and absolutely opposes same-sex marriage. Uh, now, when he was a Muslim, uh, Conrad Mohammed called Christianity a dirty religion and white people blue-eyed devils. Adams thinks he's changed, but <laughs> he says that about all the bigots, doesn't he? Uh, he has a real nose for bigots who have changed. I'd like to know where he gets his uh, information. He makes it up because he never lets us talk to them and, you know, sit them like these people he's appointed to $250,000 positions. Let's talk about how you've changed. Let's talk about how you have evolved. Now, well, the journalist, the journalist tried to talk to this new guy, Tiller, and he had no comment about this at all. He was not willing to go on the record about having changed any views. Well, and Jabari Brisport is a, is a very progressive, out uh, gay person. Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't Adam support him? Okay. Uh, because he has too many friends in the clergy who it's, are- No, these are about Adam's constituencies that got him elected. Yeah, In, exactly. in Florida, uh, a couple of abortion stories, an appellate court blocked a 16-year-old girl from getting an abortion saying, she is not sufficiently mature to end her own pregnancy. Oh my God. She she's has to get parental consent. And she says, I'm parentless. I don't have parents. And uh, she tried to get a bypass on this, on this law and uh, she couldn't get it. So she has to go to another state. 36 other states have these parental consent laws. Well, and that's why you go to court because uh, and this has been going on for decades. You go to court when you don't have uh, a parent or guardian who will give permission. You go to court and you say to the court, My, uh, you know, I'm 16, I'm 14, I'm whatever. Uh, and I need the court's permission because I can't get it from my parent or guardian. And the courts will then say, yes, you, uh, you know, I'm being abused at home or whatever. Or my, I, the child is an incestuous uh, result of a rape by a relative. I'm, I can't get permission at home. And the court says, fine, here's your permission. Go ahead and get an abortion. But this, this judge says you're not mature enough. But you're mature enough to have a child I, at 16? Have and raise a child. Yeah. In Louisiana, this is really heartbreaking. A woman is carrying a fetus who is missing the top of its head. Um, pardon me for being, that's what the ultrasound revealed. But it was 10 weeks in, too late in Louisiana. The woman's name is Nancy Davis, of all things, and said, it's hard knowing I'm carrying it to bury it. 
uh, Louisiana's high court upheld the near total ban of abortion last week. You, you need a Kansas style referendum in Louisiana. Well, they are making uh, mothers whose lives are at risk for carrying stillborn uh, children to term because the co courts will not let them. Barbarism. Uh, it, it's unbelievable. All right. In All right. Uh, By the way, the, far, by the far, far right is now going after school counselors. There was one in Maine who made a presentation on how to support trans or non-binary students. She was besieged on Twitter called a pedophile and a groomer, and the American School Counselors Association similarly was assaulted by these groups. Um, and you know, politically, this kind of stuff is working for people like Glenn Youngkin, the governor of Virginia. Um, it, it's not just an attack, by the way, on LGBTQ people. It is an attack on public education. And a, uh, a librarian in Denham Springs, Louisiana, is suing the right wing uh, for uh, call for defamation for calling her uh, a pedophile uh, because of books that are in her library and she's trying to get back at them and fight back I don't know whether she can win that but I, I appreciate her fighting back in uh, in Erion County Texas uh, a town of 1600 people uh, Liberty Council, our fa one of our favorite right-wing legal groups, is looking for the perfect spot to start attacking same-sex marriage rights. Uh, they, the Supreme Court said, oh, don't worry, we're not going to deal with this. Clarence Thomas said, oh, we really should. Well, now Liberty Council is working to get a case together. Now, so they have got... I'm sure it will be in North Texas. Speaking well, of this is, this is sort of West Texas, and the county clerk has announced that she will not give marriage licenses to same-sex couples. And Liberty Council is backing her on this and just baiting us into bringing a lawsuit. No one has asked for a, a marriage license because they want to start the process of bringing a case to the Supreme Court about uh, clerks' religious exemptions uh, to give those marriage licenses. In the meantime, this is a story from one of our viewers, we've told you that people who couldn't get married before are getting certain kinds of social security and other benefits, pension benefits, all those kinds of things, if they work hard and apply for it. One of our viewers wrote to me, uh, was with uh, his same-sex partner who died in 2003. They were together about a five or six year, a four year relationship. So to boost your social security, you, have to, you only have to be not married for nine months, so it, but it wasn't legal then. So he proved to social security, they were a committed couple. It took him six weeks of work. Uh, he had to send all kinds of paperwork and photos and testimony from people. But he is, here's what's happening to him. He is gonna get a thousand dollars more a month in social security and back pay because he pursued this. Lambda got him started and gave him some advice, but he did most of the work on his own. We've heard stories like this ever since the Social Security started recognizing same-sex marriages uh, after the fall of DOMA, uh, the Defense of Marriage Act, which prohibited the federal government from uh, recognizing same-sex marriages. Uh, but it has unfortunately become this instance of where every individual couple has or person has to fight this if they were married less than the required nine months uh and social security has really got to set up a system that says if you don't meet that criterion here are the things we need from you to validate your marriage because you weren't allowed to get married uh at that time okay should we talk about ann Hayes? sure well, she's, you all read that she died at the age of 53 in a horrible crash, um, fiery car crash. Um, look, she wasn't just an accomplished actress, but she had a personal history that was intertwined with the LGBT community. At 13 years old, her bisexual father died of AIDS. In 1997, she started an, uh, a, uh, uh, wait a minute, I'm losing my thought here. That's uh, when she got involved with Ellen, I think. Right. Recently. She started a very high profile relationship with Ellen DeGeneres, and that lasted for three years. And 
you know, she was she thought it was ma a magical relationship. It was quite high profile. They were the most high profile lesbian couple in the country. Uh, she spoke of her gratitude at the time to Harrison Ford for continuing with production of a romantic film they were making together, Six Days and Seven Nights. She went on to partner with a man and have two children, including by another man, well, the second one, who survived her. Her 2001 memoir was titled Call Me Crazy about her turbulent childhood. She says she was insane for the first 31 years of her life. She had an alter ego who was Jesus Christ, half sister. But um, Ray, the work that she later got, you know, after the whole Ellen thing and everything like that, she said, look, it's funny. It's not necessarily the career I had before, but it's the life that I wanted. Well, she, she, her father, first of all, was closeted for many years, and she accused him of sexually assaulting her. Uh, when she got involved with Ellen in 1997, uh, this was an instance where, uh, not unlike Martina Navratilova with sponsorships, her career really did take a nosedive. She had many projects canceled. She had been on a very up trajectory. I, Wag the Dog, she was terrific, and I loved Wag the Dog, and, and she was uh, very special in that. But she got really punished uh, for... Uh, uh, for entering this relationship. Uh, and she and Ellen had a, a not so comfortable parting. Uh, and Ellen uh, sort of dismissed her uh, over the years, but then has finally said some nice things after Anne's death. And Anne had a very famous breakdown at one point and was sort of wandering around LA and not knowing where she was. Uh, I think she had a very tough life but she really uh, courageously uh, came out in that relationship and didn't hesitate and really stood up for herself and the, and the relationship and, and was a real pioneer in having an out lesbian relationship in the late 90s. Now, you and I and many others have been out long before that, uh, and we have pioneers who go back centuries, uh, but in Hollywood at that time, she was uh, a path breaker. Hollywood was always one of the hardest places to come out, even though it's supposed to be so liberal, but people feel they're gonna lose their careers. But that's changing. Little by little. Well, we'll get to more of that later. Uh, back, to, back to the news. Uh, in, I, I have another good court decision in Baltimore, Maryland, where a federal judge ruled that Catholic Relief Services there cannot deny health insurance to the male spouse of one of their employees because the employee is a data analyst and the judge says, you cannot under any construction call this guy ministerial. And you, he's a secular employee, uh, your religious exemptions do not imply. Well don't Not forget where this is all going with religious exemptions. They want individuals who work in private companies who have religious convictions to be able to act on them with bigotry. But they, you know, of course, some some religions, of course, are very racist and anti-Semitic sure. and anti-Muslim and everything else. You know? right. So, uh, yeah, but this is a good decision from the Baltimore judge that yay. is saying you cannot call everybody uh, you know, subject to your religious uh, blanket. Uh, and, uh, oh, and in New York City, the Board of Corrections has issued a task force report condemning the uh, jail and prison system here for its failure to identify, protect, and care for trans, gender non-conforming, uh, non-binary, and intersex individuals. they It's just a I, I, was, I was out at Rikers when they opened a trans unit. They showed me the unit with nobody in it. And, you know, it's a hell of a trip. Um, and they ended up not using it eventually. Uh, so, yeah, it's been terrible. Yeah, they had too many trouble. And in, uh, in Boston, Boston Children's Hospital, one of the premier children's hospitals in the country, is now under relentless attack by right-wing crazies, these uh, libs of TikTok, who are like a strike force of right-wing insanity. Uh, uh, 
charging them with, uh, you know, grooming and being pedophiles for providing uh, care for trans kids. And they're lying and saying they're, you know, doing gender reassignment to three-year-olds and, and Boston Children's Hospital is just, whoa, what are you doing to us? Terrible. Sports news? Sure. Well, the again, Carl Nassib, the first out NFL star, uh, well, a regular season player, yes, is a real yes. trailblazer. Um, he came out when he was with the in Las the Vegas Ra there. In the middle there. Number 95. Yeah. In the middle. Uh, he came out while he was with the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, after having played with the Cleveland Browns already and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and now he's going back to the box with a one-year deal. He's a former All-American from Penn State, where he was the Big Ten Player of the Year in 2015. And in Kansas, we have a drag racer, not, <laughs> not RuPaul, Travis Shoemake, uh, is, drives uh, drag racing cars, uh, you know. That's the National Hot Rod Association. That yeah, he so that is, he has a pride flag on his very long uh, car there, and we have a side view too, yeah, it, Pride Kansas, uh, Topeka Pride, oh, there with Pride colors. Uh, he's got a, he's got a par parachute with a parachute that's a rainbow. Yes, double parachute. So he started in this big drag race uh, this last weekend. Uh, he made the the final uh, lineup of people. He was beaten in the first round, but he is going through the whole range of uh, competitions all over the country. And he is a great, uh, wonderful uh, exemplar of pride in drag car this racing. This is Kansas. Where's the Westboro Baptist Church? Well, uh, they're having Kansas is having its uh, first full Pride Week, State Pride Week, uh, September seventeenth to twenty fourth. So, uh, if you're in Kansas, get involved in that. I mean, look, you and I haven't talked about the breakthrough in Kansas. I don't think have we? I mean, uh, you know, about abortion. Oh, abortion, no. It's but, just tremendous. Well, you know, we have got to get over these stereotypes of uh, Midwestern states not having any uh, sense. It doesn't mean that they're voting for Democrats or or really. They have a Democratic people. governor now. Who uh, is she running yeah. for re-election? Well, she is, and she's got a race. She's got a tough race. Yeah. Well, and Sharice Davids, out lesbian, uh, native. Uh, yep. American woman who is uh, who was ele has been elected to Congress a couple of times from Kansas and is running again. Lots so, of blue in the red. Yeah. Um, all right. And yeah. at Sports Illustrated, they have a longtime award-winning reporter. M. Isn't this ESPN? Isn't isn't uh, uh, well, it says ESPN on the screen. Uh, yeah. Launch, launch, uh, M.A. Vopel is a longtime ESPN reporter, My uh, has come out as transgender, uh, female to male. Now, uh, he won the, Ga oh, he's going to be presented with the Gowdy Award. I guess that's Kurt Gowdy. Kurt Next Gowdy week. Award for, from for, the Naismith Hall of Fame uh, for basketball coverage. So wanted to be his authentic self when receiving the honor. Exactly. Uh, uh, Vopel joined ESPN in 96, covering women's basketball, the WNBA, and later volleyball, um, and is very grateful for the company, uh, ESPN's support in transitioning. Exactly. Maybe, maybe he wrote for Sports <laughs> Illustrated. I apologize. I don't know. I, I could easily have made a mistake. Okay. Uh, uh, and viewers will let us know if, who did. Uh, all right. Should we move on to international news? Well, the Pope met with a fourth group of trans people who found shelter at a church in Rome that opened its doors to trans people during the pandemic, but not one word about what he said or whether he's ending his attacks on gender ideology. Which yeah, everybody, I, I think by now we understand that he will make these uh, public gestures, but they are empty and uh, he will turn around and do some very right wing stuff. We really would like you, Holy Father to when all these people get fired from churches and schools and the, for being gay or getting married to a same-sex partner, that you step in and say, uh, that is not what Jesus would do. That would be lovely. 
Uh, meanwhile, as we become ecumenical, in the Maldives, uh, uh, Islamic Sharia law has been invoked uh, to arrest 38 men for posting sex videos online. In Nigeria, gay people are being urged to come forward and give evidence against people behind a gay dating app scam. But they're not guaranteeing them immunity from prosecution, and you can get 10 years in prison for gay sex. Now, six people were arrested for blackmailing people using the apps. Um, they would also meet them and beat them up and uh, get until they got their financial details. But uh, so arrests have been made, uh, but uh, because someone complained, but it's very tough to be a witness there. World Pride is held periodically around the world. It started with uh, World Pride 2000 in uh, Rome at the Vatican and, and in Rome as they were celebrating. Holy Father tried to stop it. Yeah. Well, he didn't succeed. But he said, this is the 2000th anniversary of Jesus's birth. What are you doing to me? Well, that's exactly why World Pride went there. And then they went to Jerusalem to be uh, uh, further provocative. And then they were scheduled to go to uh, Taiwan in 2025, but it has World Pride 2025 has been canceled. Someone has finally succeeded in canceling World Pride because uh, Interpride had been asked to change the name from Taiwan to uh, the city where it was going to be held, Kaohsiung. Uh, and they refused and said, no, we're not going to uh, do that. Now, Taiwan participates in the Olympics as Chinese Taipei. It seems to me they could have used that uh, for the World Pride name, but no. So no World Pride in Taiwan 2025. I'm sure we can think of other places that would be provocative to take World Pride. So you saw that Brittany Griner is appealing her nine-year sentence uh, you know, for being caught with uh, a narcotic, uh, supposedly. Um, now, I, I'm coming home from from London on the plane. I watched one of my favorite movies, Bridge of Spies. And one of the things, it's about a, a trade. We get a Russian spy and they have Francis Gary Powers, who was doing spying with the U-2 uh, uh, planes. And the incident, he's sentenced in the thing. He gets 10 years, three years in prison. Brittany Griner gets nine years for a little bit of uh, drugs in her paraphernalia. Well, uh, it's just- Inflation a, is rampant in Russia. It, it's a device, uh, but they say that the negotiations for a prisoner exchange are underway, but yes. her team is appealing the sentence just because it's so egregious and outrageous. All right. Uh, all right, a terrible story from Brazil. Uh, the German count consul to Brazil is a gay man, Uwe Herbert Hahn. He has been arrested for the murder of his husband of 20 years. There he is under arrest. Uh, he lied about uh, the guy's death. He tried to cover it up. This is all taking place in Rio. A sad story. Bad gay. In better news, and from Australia, a rugby player... Uh, Elia Green, 29 years old in Australia there, uh, one of the gold medal winning stars of the 2016 women's Olympics teams has come out as a man, keeping the same name. He has a female partner and they have a daughter, retired from rugby in 2021, had issues with depression, now in a much better place. Always thought he was a boy, now wants to advocate for others. Well, he really did think he was a boy when he was a child and he was shocked to find out that he wasn't. When he started growing breasts, he said, wait a minute, what is going on here? Now, I don't know what he thought about anatomy, but uh, but he has now achieved his uh, true uh, understood gender of, of male. Okay. And, and speaking of male, the Isle of Man, Chief Constable, <laughs> you like that segue? Uh, has come out with a formal apology for how anti-gay laws were sometimes enforced over the years on the Isle of Man, and he praised the courage and determination of activists who fought long and hard for what is right, which he says should be a cause for celebration. 
Uh, pardons have been given in previous years, but this was the big official apology. Health news? Yes. Well, first of all, I just want to mention polio is now here. So if you haven't been vaccinated for that, get vaccinated. Double vaccinated as a child, had the injection oh. and the sugar cubes. Well, it's popping up in Orthodox Jewish communities where they're not vaccinating their kids and, and exactly. they're finding it in the wastewater. Yeah. All right. We should mention that the, the Inflation Reduction Act is, you know, has a lot of good things in it around health care and extension of the ACA and, you know, capping drug prices and, of course, all the stuff about climate change. So that's a great victory. Every Republican voted against it. Jeffrey Sachs was show, throwing a little cold water on it uh, this morning on Morning Joe. Oh, it's not as great as they say it is. Uh, it's nothing okay, is. But <laughs> whatever. It's better than nothing. Uh, meanwhile, updates on monkeypox. Uh, the makers of the monkeypox vaccine, Bavarian Nordic, are telling the Health and Human Services Department that, you know, this one-fifth dose business would cut into our profits <laughs> may they didn't say that they said there's not enough they said that. there's not enough evidence the united states says there is evidence uh and they say uh, they're worried that people won't return for a second dose uh they're urging the u.s to collect data and you know you have to give it in a different way you have to give it under the skin people have to be trained for how to give it uh yeah. so it's a little tougher but Everybody, I mean, all the younger men I know are getting their shots. A coalition of health groups picketed Chuck Schumer's office on Sunday to demand that he press harder for a stepped up federal response. There was an aide to uh, Schumer who was there who said, yes, yes, yes. You know, they want more vaccines. Uh, the groups included ACT UP. And, well, and T-Pox T -pox is the drug to treat monkeypox. So. Yes, they want that too. Yeah. They want it all. Um, <laughs> and And... Equality uh, New York is training and paying people, we'll link to this in our email, to do community outreach on monkeypox virus, uh, including vaccinations, treatment, and prevention strategies. You have to work for two weeks in September for 100 hours. There's a $500 stipend in four, the four, four boroughs of New York except Staten Island, Rochester, Buffalo, Albany, and the Hudson Valley. North Fire Island? $5 an hour. It's, you know, it's you, you'll be doing the work of the Lord. <laughs> You're a volunteer getting a little stipend. Getting a stipend. Uh, yeah. And uh, by the way, we, we got some new data on who's getting it. 41% non-white Hispanic, non-Hispanic white, 28% Hispanic, 26% non-Hispanic black or African-American. 41% have HIV infection. Yeah. Wow. And 46% have genital lesions. Uh, and the director of the CDC, Dr. Rochelle Walensky, says we really screwed up on coronavirus. Our Whoops. systems suck. Uh, we need to reorganize the CDC to focus on public health. We need to be action oriented. Uh, forget about these esoteric uh, health papers. I mean, do them, but that shouldn't be our focus. Well, that's her job. I mean, she's the head of it, for God's yeah. sakes. And, yeah. you know, they're, they're screwing up the distribution of monkeypox vaccines. Uh, All yes. Right. Yeah, they're, tra they're traveling around the country without oh. landing where they're supposed to be. And there was a study on HIV and aging, and it found that people with HIV are more prone to heart disease, cancer, and other age-related age -related issues, potentially losing up to five years of lifespan Early treatment, though, is likely to arrest what is called epigenetic aging and keep the virus suppressed. Early treatment. Always been true. All right. Entertainment news. I watched A League of Their Own, uh, the whole series on Amazon Prime, and, and I enjoyed it. It's gotten some mixed reviews. Uh, Abby Jacobson of Broad City on the right there with her uh, fiancé, uh, wrote it as somewhat her own coming out story, and it's totally lesbian and uh, really quite entertaining. Uh, I recommend A League of Their Own. It's not anything deep, uh, but it's very entertaining and well done. I will check it out. 
We got our first look at Coleman Domingo and his role as Bayard Rustin for the Netflix series that's going to focus behind the scenes in his in Bayard's role as the lead organizer of the 1963 March in Washington. You see him there on the right. The screenwriter is Dustin Lance Black. This is produced by uh, Michelle and Barack Obama's company. And uh, it also stars Chris Rock as Roy Wilkins, Audra McDonald as Ella Baker, uh, Bill Irwin as A.J. Musty, who was uh, sort of a Byard, one of Byard's mentors, and Glenn Turman as A. Philip Randolph. I like Glenn Turman. Five on the black hand side, I think. That's a way back machine. Uh, coming to, I guess it's off-Broadway, New World Stages in October, Melissa Etheridge says she's fulfilling a lifelong dream uh, not a concert, an intimate uh, show, off-Broadway show, where she will talk about her life, tell stories, uh, perform songs. And, you know, she plays big venues, big stadiums. And now she's going to be in a small off-Broadway theater. She's going to do 12 performances starting October 13th, several days a week. She calls it Deeply Personal. And so if you are interested in Melissa Etheridge, this is a fantastic. It's there, it's there on West 50th. These used to be movie theaters. They're not tiny. It's not like a pub theater or anything. They're on West 50th, not 42nd. Uh, New World. New World Stages? Yeah. It's that, it's that cluster of, of, of theaters that used yeah, to be. Yeah, no, there's movie. another cluster on 42nd. I'm confused. Oh, but all right. New World Stages, Melissa Etheridge in October. And Alan Cumming, 57 years old now, is playing Scottish poet Robert Burns. He did it at the Edinburgh Festival. It's his dance debut in a show called Burn uh, by the National Theatre of Scotland. It's going to come to the Joyce Theatre in New York, September 20th to 25th. That's on 8th Avenue. Uh, <laughs> we know that. Showtime is bringing back. I remember back. when it was the Elgin Movie Theater. Yes, and I went to a Buster Keaton festival there. Uh, Showtime is bringing back the L Word, Generation Q, for its third season. Streaming starts November 18th of this year. So there's a PlayStation game from Sony uh, called Spider-Man Remastered. And, in a th in, and, in, uh, and within three days of it going up, a homophobic troll uploaded a modified version of it, taking out all that all those rainbows that are in it. Um, the same was done to something called Non-Newtonian New York, uh, and it you know it pitted anti-gay haters versus defenders. But Nexus mods acted within 24 hours on that and removed the the uh, the mod, the modification, and the mod creator is no longer welcome on Nexus. It's what happens when you have sort of open source uh, availability. All right, we're down to our last 20 seconds. Remember, this show will be uh, live on Facebook next week on Tuesday at 2.30 Eastern and available probably that evening on our website. And it's good to have you back, Ann, and I hope we get Catherine Stewart next week. Catherine Stewart next week.